Hey guys, I saw the other video was getting some good track shots. I figured I'd try to carry with it and get this video put out there. And I've been wanting to get it done anyway, showing off exactly what I've got done here. So here is my actual main networking rack from separate from the actual home lab. So the main networking stuff is completely separate. Um, the home lab kind of sits as itself as its own isolated thing, but it will have a backbone into here soon. So. One, you can notice my amazing lighting setup because there's no lighting in here. But two, this is the actual setup going on. So, not much. Definitely not the cleanest, but this door stays closed and not much really gets seen. So, starting off first, we have this uh, Netgear Nighthawk. Uh, let's see if I can show the bottom of it. Which, oh well. If it's got a little bit of confidential information, I'll check back on it later, but uh, it's their nicer cable modem that's running everything. So that comes in from my cable provider. I just finally got off Starlink and got to that. So we actually have one gigabit, supposed to have one gigabit speed. It's not quite that, but from there, goes into a Ubiquiti Edge Router X, which that is my main router, which it's actually doing fantastic. I so far haven't really had any complaints about the speed-wise, especially with what I've been trying to push through it, but it's been running pretty fantastic. And next after that, we got the main patch base. So here's my WAN connection coming in. Um, and then some stuff is labeled as it's been going through as I've been adding it. So there's the APs around the house. We've got three of them, one downstairs. Uh, which is that one, one in the garage, and one upstairs. Uh, and then just the rest of the connections. So it, this one is the Juniper. See if I can get behind these. It's a little tight back in here. This is the EX2200 PoE. Fantastic switch for being $100. It's a 48 port gigabit with four SFP ports. So not 10 gig ports, but just SFP. But they work fine. I don't need the switch to be stupid fast. Um, which eventually I'm probably gonna upgrade this where it's actually gonna have a 10 gig backlink between the other switches. And that way, so the actual main server rack has a full 10 gig backlink. So and the next is this black box. This black box is a networked audio amplifier. If you saw from the, one of the first, actually the first video on this channel, um, this is running the uh, link play amplifier. So these are the up to stream uh, amplifiers from Relic Audio. They run the link play software all configured through Home Assistant. Um, so there's different zones all connected. And then, I can't really see, but the backside cable management is awful. And not much really see back there. But yeah, this is the this is the main core of the network. So it's not very much, but it is just the core routing to other places. So next I'll, uh, well first if I go anywhere else, I'll show you this. There is the, P the access point. This is the Ubiquiti uh, Unify AC Pro. Or no, this is the, this is actually the U6 Pro, I think, or whatever the name was. So that's one of the AP and there's four, there's three of them. So three of them in the house, two of them out at the shop. So um, next I'll uh, head out to the shop to show you guys what's happening out there. All right guys, while I'm still standing out back, I'll show you right up there, you can see the AC mesh. You can see my brother, sorry, it's negative seven out here right now. That's the outdoor mesh access point from Ubiquity. Absolutely love them, 600 feet of range. And there's two speakers on the front side of the shop. So next I will walk inside and show you what's happening inside. All right, we are now inside the shop. Look up on the ceiling, there's one of their, uh, I think it's the U6 access points because it's the Wi-Fi 6 rated access points. Up in the ceiling, I gotta fix both the cable connections on these. I do not know why, but they are only running at 100 megabit speeds when the cable is, should be at one gig. But here is the rack back over here. So all the cabling comes down through this pipe. So it goes all the way up to the ceiling, comes down through, uh, I think this is actually two inch or inch and a half pipe. I'm actually an electrician by day job, so I actually usually have this stuff. It's this stuff running over to my workbench, so I have some cabling so I can do a remote monitor and everything else. All the speaker runs, and then the access points. Not the cleanest yet. This is still definitely a work in progress. 
there is a fiber optic cable that goes back to the main switch. It comes out here, and there's some excess coiled up right there. You can kind of see because it's a pre-made run. Definitely don't have the cap cap ugh, capacity to splice it. Uh, obviously, can't talk this morning either. But this is the actual rack. Not, it's a little bit going on now, but not too much. So starting here at the top, get down a little bit lower. We have the eight outlet. PDU from StarTech, just generally running everything. But right now all the amps are plugged into separate outlets which are going to be wired separately because the amps draw a lot. I'll show you that in a minute. Next we have the exact same switch as downstairs was. So here's the fiber backlink over to it, the access points, and my network audio amplifiers. So not much in this switch going on right now, so 48 port's a little overkill, but yeah, it was a cheap switch. Um, next we have these are the DIY audio ones, so these are the, um, these ones provide you just the line out. Next we have the same one as downstairs, it's in a taller chassis, but I put them in a, but I put them in there just because I couldn't actually get the shorter one. So the shorter one I had, I just put for the line out ones. So the taller one's got a bigger chassis, that's fine, helps with air distribution and it keeps them cooler, even though not running that much. The next, we have two of the Rockville amps. If you definitely want for audio cleanliness, do not go with these, but I'm just after loudness, and for loudness, they work. So this gets Rockville amps to suck. This is the RPA-14. Next is the RPA-12. RPA-14, I believe, is the more powerful one at uh, like 1200 watt RMS per channel, or not channel, put together at like four ohms. And this one's like 800. Or sorry, no, this one's 1200 at 4. This one is uh, 14 or 1600 at 4. Uh, put in bridge. So, really, they're not, they're kind of underrated because up here, I got the two, I got a PV115. And then over on the other side, I got a PV115. I'll show you on the other end what I've got. And then right there is two PV115. Uh, 118s for subs. So next we'll go around to the back side. Do -do. So not a lot, oh, there's a lot actually going on from the outside look, but there's the PDU for the network, actual just the network audio amps. They don't draw much in the uh, network switch. So let me move these out of the way. So next we have this network audio amp. So you have all your network ports in. I didn't put a separate switch in there because I want it to be all outside managed. Then you have your line out ports right there. And you have your four line in ports. Now down by one. Let's see if I can move some of these cables out of the way. Same style of power switch connection, same style of network in. This one's only a four channel version. You have, you have your Speakon output for the speaker connections. Those go to outside speakers, and then you have the line in right there. These two go to the bigger amps for the indoor speakers. And then you just have the indoor amps, and ignore the amazing wire nut on there that I'm using to series the subs. Not the best way of doing it, but, you know, it works. Not going to complain too much. But if I were to walk around... Oh, there's my dog. If I were to go over here, try to show what's over here. There is a PV215, uh, and I don't think I will be able to get it. I can barely get it. There's another one up there. So those are the main speakers that are driving the shop. I'll walk over to the other one first, but you can see. I'm trying to get it in frame. It's just really high up there. Those are all the network runs. These are all cabled hangered over because I had them left over from a commercial job. So they all just kind of run across the top. And then you can see them drop down over there to where my workbench is. So walk over here. And then over here, I have more of the 118s. So the bottom one is untouched. The top one, it's got a scar sub in it because the sub was blown. I got them a set of two of them for a hundred dollars i think a hundred dollars each sub was blown i got a hundred dollars back for one of them so i replaced the sub put a scar one in there so now i can hit even lower frequencies than what it's rated for so 
which is nice. But yeah, and then here is the actual network runs coming down for my workbench. The white one I plan on doing as the video line, video over IP. And then you have a white audio line in, and then you have, or actually line out going to the amps. And then you have your main network runs there. So yeah, that is the overview of my actual network system in here. On the next video, I will either try to do a video of the network switches, like the more in depth on the actual network switches, or I'll hopefully have the parts to build the servers first. But I still need to do another video on the home assistant with link play, showing exactly better how you actually integrate it. It took me a second to get integrated, but it's really easy to do once you do. So anyways, I'll thank you guys for watching and catch you guys in the next video.